Welcome to the acclaimed podcast, The Deep Dive, featuring your esteemed hosts, Andy Monitor and Drew Dinzik, powered by Betsperts. Welcome to The Deep Dive, Andy. We're going to hit the other side of the coin from last week's Evergreen podcast, where we talked yeah. quality over quantity with a full healthy serving of quantity today that is to say how do we come up with fair prices for numbers 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 hope you like your numbers let's give <laughs> numbers, a quick numbers, shout numbers. out to, uh, i mean who should we shout out for number who invented numbers the uh, the arabic? Were out there. No. The, the, yeah the arabic people that's not i don't even know how you say that mm. um the aztecs and maybe invented zero if i remember mayans one of the one of the indigenous tribes in South and Central America. So a lot of people to shout out. We don't have time for all that. We'll just assume that numbers are here. Math exists. And there's a major tennis tournament. And yes, praise Jeff Sackman for really doing an angel's work. And oh, yeah, no doubt. He's, a lot of data. he's shortcut a lot of the process here. We, no doubt. We did, and I don't know, I don't want to speak for Drew, but we did not just pick tennis because there's a major tennis tournament coming up. But it's also a really easy one because if we had to spend, you know, a big amount of time working on like scraping and pulling some of this data collection, uh, you know, that's that's something you have to figure out elsewhere or just uh, at a different time. This is just so easily accessible. There's so much free yeah. tennis data and it's so easily, uh, I mean, just taken. Honestly, even if you just want to control A, control C, control V, it'll be a little messy with the headers and menus it brings over, but honestly, it's close enough and VLOOKUP doesn't have to look at the whole sheet. That's a great point. All right. Uh where should we start here? Uh, do you want to kind of go off the top and talk a little bit about how you, and when you first decided, okay, um, I need to figure out a money line price. Hmm. Can't just, can't just assume that minus three is good uh, yeah. here. I need to actually come up with a win probability for these teams. Um, you know, what is, what was your first foray into the quant space, Andy? So, you know, obviously this is a very different sport. Let's talk about sports where, you know, the scoring is non-limited. Yeah. You know, like, I guess you could score 100 goals in soccer. If, obviously, time time's what limits mm -hmm. you in that sort of thing. Time and just, you know, the reality. But, you know, you could score a bunch of points in basketball. Uh, tennis has a rigid scoring system. It's going to be a little goofier. But I think that, you know, the first forays into modeling any of those sports were, you know, how many points do I think this team scores? And eventually building that out from just a kind of a, a median projection to more of a distribution and working on that, whether it was a really, really bad soccer model I started with when I tried to, remember my first one was, I'm going to sure. beat the EPL, which was wrong. That was, <laughs> that was an incorrect thesis. Um, and then, you know, obviously some basketball stuff and, you know, football is quite a bit different with yeah. some of the granularity you have there and just how kind of, anchored you should be to some of those lines anyway but I, I you know i think my first ones were always trying to build out uh you know a projection of a distribution of scores for both teams both you know uh, both sides of a match and going from there and then you know then with those you can build out some money line projections pretty easily yeah okay uh that is similar to my sort of foray into this. I definitely, I think the first time I ever built a model, I literally copied and pasted the DVOAs from Football Outsiders and then said, we'll average offense and defense here and we'll average offense and defense here and we'll get a percentile and I'll go to a normal distribution or I'll go to a, uh, a discrete distribution and I'll pick that value up and that's my estimated score for that team. Yeah, and, we'll and if you if you want to talk, and that's my estimated score for that. Yeah, if you if you want to talk real shitty models too, like you know, my first foray was forever and ever ago. Where I mean, I might have done this on like paper, where it's just like, well, why don't I just take uh, basketball team A, take their average points scored, and then average uh, the average points given out by the other team, and yeah, use that. Sure. Which obviously Vegas doesn't know about those numbers. <laughs> of course, I was going to win, but I mean. 
as stupid as that fucking sounds, and it sounds incredibly stupid, it was a step in the right direction. Like every good model is probably built on the, you know the shoulders of thousands of shitty models and every good i mean i had a, i had a conversation with uh, somebody in the dms about golf and he had an idea and he just kind of asked me he's like do you think this flies and i kind of had to say i don't know like this is a it's an interesting theory but that's this that's the thing you have to do with all these interesting theories you have to you have paper trade it or back test it or just start tracking it however you want to do making small bets on what you think it is and going back and look at it and honestly i'd say 99.9 percent it's not going to show anything but you usually find something in there that leads you to another answer that you know you end up figuring it out and honestly along the way and this is gonna you know this is gonna be secondary to today's conversation but along the way you're going to run into a lot of things that annoy you about your your data collection process your data wrangling your data cleaning your data you know your, your however you're running your algorithms or whatever you're doing and you're gonna to try to figure out a faster way to do it and that's that's how i've learned most of my excel my r is just like i can't do this anymore this takes too long and mm -hmm. you, you spend half a day Googling stuff. You learn something new and uh, you've learned something faster. So like just okay. it's, it sucks. It's just like doing it, doing okay. it is how you get there, right? Well, I'm yeah, of course. And doing it is how you get there. And this is this this podcast is probably better served for the viewers on YouTube. It's more really who we're doing this one for rather than if you're listening in your car. If you're listening into your, in your car, I'm sorry, you're not going to get the same. <laughs> you're not going to get the same experience out of this particular podcast. Apologies. Um, but I mean, uh, we'll, we'll try. We'll try yeah, to make it here's, best here's for what audio. I have, but... Here's what I had I in mind. Watch it on YouTube. Here's what I had in mind. And uh, I'm going to need you to basically provide some color as I'm going through this, as I'm doing some of this stuff. I'm going to need you to ask some questions. I'd like you to point out some things that you do differently and some of the basics here that may, I'm sure I will learn something from you on this podcast. This is, yeah, this is good. Um, but uh, no, what I'd like to do is basically... I, we're on. I'm on record last week of I. I think as you you know once you kind of mastered the basics of quantitative underpinnings to your what a fair price should be for anything, then it's important to take the next step of adding a qualitative layer to that. Um, but we're going to take a step backwards and do the un underpinnings today, and we're going to do it in the context of the French Open, which is coming up starting on Sunday. Now, tennis is the perfect sport to do use this as an example, in my opinion, because it is. Um, mono e mono or woman o e woman o whatever um, I, I, and yeah there's for that reason there's just less moving parts and if you have a metric exactly. that if you have a metric that is uh you know realistically represents the strength of a given person against their opponent uh then you have a, a launching pad to come up with the win probability for when they go head to head uh, and the most common framework for this is the ELO model yeah. space. And this is, mm, I don't know a ton about the history of this, so you don't hope you're not don't, coming for the I, history I know, of modeling here. I but do, it was I do know some chess, history on this. Chess mostly, or was it the Facebook guy that figured this out? Chess, this is very much rooted in the in the you know ranking of chess players. It's Honestly, it's best served for chess. Okay. It's very difficult to use for almost every other sport. Tennis sort of a bit of a you know you, you can get away with it at some point i know people have hard time finding a k value that works for them in tennis sometimes um i know just one hmm. thing i've learned about the elo model over the many many years of reading about stuff like this is don't say elo it is not an acronym it is no not i know I, i've definitely is, learned that the hard way is, i was like i said is, that to someone smart and they were like you mean elo and I'm like, yeah, yeah it's, it's a guy's last name <laughs> yeah that so, um okay East, eastern europe mathematician something i like to think lines. of it as a power rating okay yeah. and really the way that it effectively well, works yeah, is, it's a relative power ranking it's a relative pairing yeah that's right it's a relative power ranking and really the all that matters at least for the purposes of tennis at least the best i can tell you um if you have an elo rating on a given player we're not going to go through the trouble of how do you get that rating because there are lots of very 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 good public ones and that's what we're going to start with today yeah. um but the, what do you do with it is kind of the key part part you know key question um well, and, a little step yeah. back too drew sure. i think this is i'm glad we did this the week after we did last week's because i think tennis is a perfect example on how to marry what we're going to do yeah. today with last week because, surely um 
I don't think I don't think you're going to be able to black box tennis where, you know, you're just like, hey, I have the best numbers. I have more data than anyone. I can figure this out. Like there's still going to be a lot of qualitative stuff you need to know about players, about how players play against each other. And I, I, I do think, you know, that that's what we tie into last week. Like, hey, this says this, but the market's off. Why is that? Like, why, why am I showing huge value on this guy? It's like, well, he just doesn't beat this type of player. He can't, you know, he, he can't, or I should say she, honestly, because it seems like more of a WTA thing where it's like this person will let a pusher just slap balls back at them all day and constantly make mistakes on their own. You know, it's, it's certain mm-hmm. kind of players can't handle power. Certain kind of players struggle against big serves, big kick serves, second people with big second serves, like uh, our girl, the Amazon, Amazonian warrior. Like, I, I think you probably speak better to this, but the stylistic differences are probably like secondary to this and definitely need to be tied in once you've, once you've put your numbers together. Yep. 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 Ah, I love it, man. All right. Let's, uh, let's get into the meat of this. Um, so let's, let's, let's start with, uh, you know, some data resources first. Uh, and we're going to go to the, uh, the great, uh, Jeff Sackman website, tennis abstract to start here. Uh, so if you can see online, I'm just sharing my screen as I'm surfing the web. Um, and tennis abstract has a couple of really useful things. Uh, obviously the, um, you know, any given player like, Oh, I don't know, Iga Swiatek, you can click through and you can get recent results. There are some very useful stuff in here in terms of who has she been playing? How, what have those, what have those players been ranked? What happened in, you know, what, 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 what zoom, was zoom in one more ratio? time. Um, yeah. So there's basically lots and go. lots of results here for, per, for past, uh, uh, past performances, you have a nice little summary of how she's season done level, at a yeah. you know season level in terms of hold and break and all kinds of things like that. Uh, and if you want to go a little bit deeper dive, you can look specifically at her results, and we can pick a specific event like Roland Garros, and we can look at all of her results ever at Roland Garros. And now this is last fifty two, and there's nothing because she hasn't played yet this year. But over her career, Iga Swiatek is twenty one and two. At Roland Garros, and these are all the players she's defeated. Pretty this good. is the round she's defeated them in. These are the ranks when she played them, and these are the dominance ratios of all of these matches. She's only been defeated here twice: once by the drug cheat Simona Halep, and once Jeez. by Maria Zachary. Uh, in what was one of the twice. most surprising, weird, one of the weirdest uh, singular clay. Um, uh, I guess she was only yeah one of the, she was only the ninth ranked player in the world at that point in time. But this was coming off of just one of the most spectacular first ever uh, what do you call it the uh, maiden slams we've ever seen in women's tennis yeah, where she, she won without. I mean, dropping look, look at those scores. Whoo, whoo! This was I mean this this is this was as dominant a performance at Roland Garros as you've seen going back to Steffi Graf in 1988 was the last time. There's, you saw yeah, there's only two dominant. fours in there. I believe. <laughs> yeah, it was really just incredible. So. This is just sort of a little bit of a, if you haven't ever seen Tennis Abstract, that's sort of uh, the uh, the starting point here. And what's really useful well, is and just a nice touch little, on this sure. quick, Drew, too. Yeah. You're not logged in or anything. No, this, no. This somehow is free. free. It's completely yeah. free. And like you said, yeah. the, the the amount of splits you can do on that, if you wanted to, like you went to an event and said, how'd she do at this event? You can say, I want to see only hard court. I want sure. to see only hard court at the thousand level or higher. I want to see, you know, only clay courts and this. I want to see indoor this. I want to see against Christ. You can say, I, I want to see against left handers. You, know, sure. you can do a whole lot of, uh, whittling it down on this it's quite a little amazing resource sure uh but let's just take what sackman's done for us here which is he has a specific set of elo rankings current elo rankings for the wta tour uh this includes uh everything at the tour level and core level qualifying uh in the last 52 weeks so it's the last uh it's the last year of matches played um, that's good and bad. I mean, there's certainly, uh, you know, some, some time decay with a lot of this stuff that you have to maybe think about if you want to do a little bit better than what, uh, you're getting for free here. Um, but as you go down and you look, everything's sorted by just flat out ELO. Now this is just a general generic skill rating that is surface independent. Um, but what 
you know, what Jeff has done is solved. Uh, this is, oh, by the way, I should mention, you, you mentioned K rating. Um, as far as I understand, these ratings include his back calculation of what K ought to be for all of this stuff. So mm -hmm. this represents an ELO for best of three tennis, right? You have to make an adjustment if you're going to do best of five, but the adjustment's pretty small. Um, and that's why we picked the women because we don't have to deal with that. Yeah. Yeah. And we'll, I mean, we'll, just we'll real quick, at, too, we'll we give the men a little bit of shine before we leave. We, here. Yeah, yeah, we didn't, uh, you know, we talked ELO a little and we said, hey, it's used for chess. But I mean, just at the most basic level, if anyone's, yeah, I mean, look at uh, Vondra Sova's. She's 1958. And let's say she plays Zachary and loses. Like, mm -hmm. It's, I, I guess, tennis is kind of zero sum, but like, in that case, you know, the adjustment would be added and one girl's rating goes down, the other girl's rating goes up based Correct. on the win. And obviously the, the nature of the win, how, how much it goes up. It's the same, you know, we, we'll keep going back to chess. Like if you beat the tar out of somebody in chess and it's quick and there's blunders, I guess. I, I'm, I'm not 100% sure how, the, how it works as far as the dominance rating in chess, but your your points, your ELO goes up by how, how badly you've how beaten badly you've beaten them. Yeah. yeah. Right. Um, so let's just take our top two players here and try to guess at what a rating would be if these two players played each other in a match on clay at Rolling Garros. Okay. Bang. Bring this shit in. Now this is a mess. Obviously the formatting is not great. I'm going to paste just the data here uh, to see if we can't uh, clean this up a little bit. And of course the headers are effed as always. Uh, let me, let me uh, uh, pull... I think I had already done this for one. Oh, yeah, I did. It was these guys. Um, so let's see here. Okay. All right. Hopefully, you guys can see all this now. This is the same data we were just looking Are at. Are you trying to share uh, an oh, Excel? That's weird. Yeah, why is it not showing my screen? Well, when, when, you, when you present, you can present either a window, you can present a tab, or you can present your entire computer. Oh, I'm and, trying to present a window. Yeah, well... When you when you go choose everything like your desktop so it'll yeah, show right. anything you open. Present share screen window. Don't go no don't go window. Oh, entire screen. Oh okay. entire screen. There we go. Yeah, otherwise, once you switch off of, of your browser, uh, it won't see. show anything. Thank you. Okay. There we go. So I dumped all that data into Excel here. Oh, and gross. what? Yeah, it is messy. Yeah, it's, it. yeah, it's, it's, it's awful. Um, all right, so let's, uh, but let's do something with this. So we want to know it, what we don't know win probability for Iga versus Sabalenka. What do we use out of this? Well, you could use the straight up Elos, or we could go specific to Clay, or we could do this cell, which is C Elo, whatever that means. Let's see if we can figure that out. Would you guess that it is half Clay, half all? Oops. That's a lot. That's a lot, yeah. It's not that. Plus, for two. Uh, yeah, if what do you know? Charles Barkley. It is exactly. <laughs> 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 it is exactly that. So what you get in these, uh, if you didn't already know, the clay raw is only clay results. Uh, the hard raw is only hard results. The grass raw is, rat, is only grass results. The ELO is weighted by sample size of each of those three. It's not an mm -hmm. average of these three. Uh, and uh, you have a C ELO, which represents a 50-50 weighting of clay and all. Love that, personally. I think, you know, doing some sort of... Um, number it normalizes yeah. a little to the to your overall strength I think. exactly normalizes to your overall strength and you know what's even more important than that andy this number here is better because it has a deeper sample size yep. any given season if a play if a woman plays 15 matches on clay that means she was winning matches that means she is good at, at, at mm -hmm. uh, clay tennis right uh whereas over the balance of an entire season maybe they play you know 50 if they're very good maybe they play 80 right so it's you know realistically the the more data you have in the pot to come up with the number the stronger it's going to be generally however it does lack the surface specific nature and so for those reasons a 50 50 weight between overall elo and clay raw elo is perfect so let's use these numbers right here. I'm going to highlight them so we don't forget where we're getting, you know, where we're going for those. Uh, you know what? Let's make it a nice, uh, a nice Roland Garros, uh, oh, a go. nice Roland Garros clay color, right? Um, 
and we want win probability for e for ega uh let's actually move this over here there's so many yeah there's so many uh <laughs> And uh, yeah, lots of ways to do this. Uh, let's just uh, let's just be clowns and ask ChatGPT how to do this in Excel. How do you get an ELO rating for tennis in Excel? Okay, this is the equation. One over RA is the ELO rating for player, or RB is ELO rating for player B. RA is the ELO rating for player A divided by 400, and this is a logistic regression. So we're going to use this equation for win probability equals one over 10 to the RA is. Sabalenka Zelo, RB is Iga Zelo, and the win probability, Andy, 68%. I'd never round up. Uh, okay, you, we got to finish. Uh, we got to finish. Well, I, 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 think I, spins, could, right? I think I could do this one a little easier. <laughs> you want to shortcut it? Yeah, why don't we just go one minus uh, D5? All right, there beautiful. Let's turn this into a percent. You do want to give it a decimal or not? I do. I want to go to the tenth. Okay. All right. Six, 67.8 for Iga, 32.2 for Sabalenka. What is that money line, Andy? <laughs> oh, that's about minus, minus one two, over blank. Two, oh, so we're going to go price. Oh, no. Let's go. Not quite. Minus one 197. Blank. So Arena should be about $3. We'll say three three eleven, uh, And uh, Iga should be about 147 This, of course, is in decimal odds. And so for you heathens who let's, use let's money. Let's take a little odds. break, though, before you yeah, do this sure. conversion. Yeah, or you want to talk about it while I actually type in the equation? Yeah, do the conversion. But boy, howdy, once you start doing anything like this, even simpler than this, if you start working with anything in a spreadsheet or anything past that, if you're using, you know, any sort of languages, like if you're working with it and, you know, you get your Jupyter notebook, whatnot, I would start getting used to decimal odds, man. Let's see. Oh, I said 209. You're close. Um, man. Yeah. Well, one uh, 66 is 200. So, um, and the beauty of this is we have a no vig line. So Drew just did the math to get it to American odds. Minus two eleven for Iga, plus two eleven for Sabalenka. Should we? Should we? Uh, <laughs> is there any point to building some over around it on that? I mean, this no, is what. No, 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 no. This is the because this is no because this is the number you want. This you is want the number the you want. Yeah, this is what we no care about. Odds. Yes, right. This is what we care about. Um, yeah. Okay, so. This very rudimentary model we just built told us that if Sabalenka's price is better than plus 211, go bet that money line. That seems fair, right? And actually, this is... Clay, yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, this you know, is... And you this, know what would yeah, be interesting sure. here, Drew? Sure, is, sure, 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 uh, sure. Let's run this exact same uh, exercise on grass. All right, I like that call. Uh, you know what Just, I should do not, then? Not a massive you know what I should difference. do then? I'm going to make an ELO cell here. And rather than pulling up from that portion of the table, we're going to pull it from right here and right here. Yep. And that way, bang. Okay. And then for grass, bang. Whoa. <laughs> what do you know? They're almost the same number, Andy. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, and of course, on uh, well, on a hard true, court, it's in column L. What is yeah, right here? Yeah, they're almost yeah. the same number, so it's 50 50 match. Yeah, right. On hard court, we're looking at uh, something like uh, 160, 169. Uh, going back to clay, we had uh, 211. So basically, the um, the slight uh, increase um, available for uh, you know, this or at least the uh, the 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 market rating here is telling us that uh. Uh, that Iga's best surface is clay relative to Sabalenka, which I agree with. Now, you want to check this against like what the a recent market close was? Yeah, I feel like you picked these two women for a reason. <laughs> <laughs> like, I've got, I'm right. no fool. I, where should fool we go? Me. Let's go to. Uh, oh, this is God, best. Odds, here's odds, my. Here, here's my. Odds, odds portal, portal is sucks ugly. Now. It sucks now, but it's still the best it's way to get. A, 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 yeah. yeah, a resource. I'm, I'm going to show, share you one. Zoom in a little here so I can see. Okay, so I'm on Odds Portal. I go to tennis. Uh, actually, I got to archive results in yeah. under betting tools. Uh, we're going to go to tennis. It's going to pull up 
a million different tournaments. There's literally 9 million tournaments here. Uh, let's go to WTA Madrid. Little WTA scrolling. Madrid. Way the hell down there. And uh, lo and behold, the final was Sabalenka versus Iga. And here is all of the prices against the, across the various books. Would you? Wouldn't you know? One of the shortest prices is Pinnacles plus two ninety four. Um, interestingly, I don't think this is capturing all of the odds movement because they just keep the beginning and the end after mm -hmm. it goes to archive. But it opened plus two forty nine and it got bet out to two ninety four. So two eleven obviously is telling us bet Sabalenka. But I got to tell you what, Andy. The this Clay Elo is influenced by that win she had over Sviatek. <laughs> Almost certainly, if you were forward projecting with the Elos yeah. at the time before that Madrid match, it would have told you something like I don't know, three hundred, maybe, yeah, something yeah, like I was, that. I was gonna say yeah. that the numbers, the numbers we are working with right now, what you're saying is incorporate like, this. It's, result. it's incorporating. It's that incorporating win. this result. Yeah, or maybe a more fun way to chess this would be look at a tennis match that's tomorrow and see how far it's off, and you know, we'll uh, we'll decide if we want to bet that. Yeah, um, let's pick. Uh, let's pick two interesting qualifiers who we really don't know any heads or tails about. How about that? Okay, you. You uh, get over to the abstract. I'll pull up uh, Rabat. Should we go Rabat? Or do you oh, want to actually, go for you know what? I got an even better. Uh, we already, I already pulled all of the numbers here. Okay. okay. So here's our ELO calc tab. And what I'm going to do is let's, let's set up a way where we can type in a name and it'll look up and pull all this data. You want to do that? Uh, yeah, just uh, let's do a little Equals VLOOKUP. Huh? Look up this in my player ID column and bring back the age. Okay. Oops. Wonder why that didn't work. Oh yeah, I gotta I gotta I gotta I gotta lock my uh yep. my name cell. The dollar signs. Lock in my name cell. Drag in my my numbers. Look at look at this son of a bitch. How about Mira Beautiful. versus Osorio? Oh shit, really? That's the, <laughs> that's a match tomorrow? <laughs> that is a match tomorrow? Did you fuck are you, did you tell him? Are you fucking kidding me that Mira versus Osorio are playing head to head tomorrow? You know this. You don't, don't I did not know this. Don't play coy. I did not know this. Oh my god, Mira Osorio. Osorio Mira that, and that, Driva. Dude, those are two top 40 women. They're playing in qualifying. Well, Mira hasn't like been around all that me. long because she's like nine years old. She's like I feel, I feel like from, uh, I don't really know how to spell North. Mira's name. Let me uh, let me go get her. Uh, I I pulled her because I assumed she was going to make it the field, and I did a two simulation. Like, yeah, it's two hours. Okay, Mira, her Clay Elo, CSF, Jesus Christ. Um, okay, Mira uh, like Dave Mira. Yeah. Okay. Uh. I'm just curious what she would be lining against Sabalenka. Did she play Sabalenka? Did she get crushed by her? Oh, you have the name. Do do V look up so it pulls the names or just equal. Oh, whatever. Equal, yeah. 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 I think uh I think yeah, I think she I forget if I forget somebody somebody waxed Mira in in Madrid. I can't remember. I think it was Sabalenka. Um but uh okay, who who's the other one? Osorio? Osorio. God damn, what a what a match. I gotta get up for that. <laughs> so, sorry, oh. Okay. Camilla, sorry, yeah, right? There we go. Yeah. Um, okay. Let's bring in their clay. Their, their, their Kellos. Okay. Woo -hoo -hoo. Ooh. Boy, oh boy, we got a tight one. Um, hmm. we're, we're calling it a pick 'em, essentially. We're calling it a pick 'em. Do you want to go a little deeper on this? Or should we uh should we Do you think yeah, these samples are big enough? Let's go a little deeper on this one. Okay. Let's go a little bit. But before we do that. Do, do we think I, that, okay you said you you just asked the exact correct question do we think these samples are big enough because i don't know <laughs> i really don't uh let's look at um uh let's look at yeah. tennis abstract and get a sense here of what's happening um this is also a good sanity check whenever you have a uh, because as yeah. sign collectibles pointed out even at chris one of the best prices on mira it's she's minus 150. She's minus 150 to one. Well, she's yeah, but she's like the hot thing right now. Like, she is. 
So yeah. you got to think: is it is it the market influence? Is I'm am I missing something? Is the sample jacked up? It's, sure. Uh, it's worth looking into. You should be doing some sanity checks in this. Sure, shit. sure, sure. Okay, so let's look at Osorio first. <clears throat> um, she's she has been white hot uh, lately. Um, only lost to. Uh, she man, she made it to round. She, I I forgot she made it all the way to round four in Rome. Um, this is obviously plenty of clay results that are recent. That's good uh, for for you know kind of trusting that her her elo is her C elo is correct. Um, not a ton of matches in the year twenty twenty three. She only played a little bit in January and February. Skipped all of March tiny little stretch in april so, so maybe she got hurt and that's uh oh yeah she retired look at that uh she got hurt and retired in uh round 32 Hired. in monterey um after yeah she didn't play very well in uh, uh merida either merida whatever that merida is that, merida. Is that no, the it is island merida. In, i have a, i work with yeah. a guy who lives very close to merida is that like an island in portugal or something no know. merida is like this uh it's like cancun without the tourists it's on the Yucatan, but it's nice. Okay. Uh, they they had they have a golf tournament near it too. Okay, so let's let's, let's just kind of get a sense of where she's at. Uh, okay, that all looks good. Let's look at uh, some of her totals. Oops, I'm gonna go to what do I want here? I want. Um, I, want I lost to my this sh- for the audio listeners. show career. Hmm. Where's her some of her summary stats? You're on the wrong page. Am I? It doesn't have the picture of her. You got you got too deep. Go back to the main page and click her. That was it. Like I think she just hasn't played enough main event to okay. get the. To, oh yeah, here we go. This you're right. We is. weren't on the main page. This is what I look for. Okay, so she's got 15 matches this year. Sorry, let me zoom in. This is nice too. These tour level ones where you can look oh, yeah. just like that. Instead 15, of starting counting. 15 matches this year. She played 30 last year. She played 30 the year before. That's all good. Um, decent dominant ratio last three years. So she's playing players she should be beating and she's beating them. That's good. Um, let's grab a couple of pieces of information and carry them forward. How about that? Sure. I'm going to say I want to know what her hold percent is and her hold on clay. Can you describe what hold percent is for me, Andy? The amount of times you serve Mm -hmm. and win the the, uh, point. Or the game, rather, I guess. You win multiple points and uh, outdo your opponent and hold serve. How often is she holding serve? Uh, let's see. Has it been as she she and should she we do a combined? Should we do total and clay? She, yeah, that's kind of what I wanted. That's what I want to do. I, I don't know if we for sure have that broken out yet. Yeah, uh, that's tough. Uh, yeah, we do. Let's just grab her career clay and grab her this year's. How about that? Sure, I can okay. deal with that. 2023, her hold percent is 65.5. Her break percent Oof. is 32.7. Uh, let's see. Yeah, you put them in the wrong order. Yeah. There you go. Much better. Yes, yes. And on oh. clay. We're going to do clay for the career. The career. Uh, her hold percent is 61. Her break percent is 42. Okay. Why do we do this then? This is the key right here. It's yeah. break percent. Talk on about clay. the differences in surfaces oh, here. Shoot, dude, break the hold percent on clay usually goes down, but not like amazingly bad unless your serve absolutely stinks. Yeah. Uh, break percent on clay. If you are a good player, if you have talent should go up appreciably. So you see the fact that she has a 10% higher break percent on clay than she has so far this year in a good year. Oop, I'm in the wrong row. This is yeah. uh, Camilla. Uh, just the fact that she has 10% higher break percent on clay than she has all year is a sign that she's just, she's a very talented clay player. That's a, that's uh, a fun point though, are, Drew. Yeah, sure. That's a good way. That's a good way to, I'm sure you've done this. Like, you put put data in there. You're going to come up with some fucked up numbers if you put the data in the wrong spot. Yeah, you like, are. Yeah. Absolutely. It's like, oh man, I have a flipped favorite here. But yeah, and just at the at the highest highest level, and there's yeah. other small factors, yeah. but the biggest thing is slower surface, fewer aces, uh, easier to get to balls. 
Yeah. And yeah. after a couple volleys, it's suddenly you've lost the advantage of being unserve. Okay. So this is H plus break 23. And this is H hold plus break clay. And honestly, these numbers are very, very, very I was good. Gonna say, very tell good. people what. So um, yeah, you at 98% for hold plus break. You added the hold percentage yeah. plus the break percentage yep. in 23. And then you add, you get got one just for clay. She yeah. has 98 for for just 23 and 104 sure. combined for clay. Talk about what a really good number sure, is. For sure, that sure, 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 sure. I'm going to add one more piece of context. You ready? Okay. And that is uh opponent rank we're gonna look at the median of those okay so this is a little tougher to come by um we basically just have to eyeball it looking at her kind of last this, this this year so versus rank there's some big numbers in here yeah. okay i'm gonna say the median of these is about 78. 70 i'm gonna say 71 is about the median um, so in general, we're looking at, she's playing players that are generally in the, uh, 20 to hundred range, I would say, just kind of looking at this, not a ton that are, you know, really high, you know, yeah, you I mean, know, she really played impressive. Carolyn Garcia, but yeah. she hasn't played okay. some rank to the point. Okay. Let's, uh, just for context, let's look at, uh, at what, what else is, is up, is out there. Um, tennis abstract back to the main page. We're going to go to the, go to the bottom here and we're going to look at, uh, this WTA stats leaderboard. Is this something go. you can see, Andy? I can. Yes. Okay. This is show you who's, yep. uh, what, what an elite hold percentage looks like. Hold percentages. Let's sort them. This is now all in the last 52. So all surfaces in Should the last just, 52. Do you want to do all or do you want to go to clay? Uh, or both a little of both. Let's, let's let's look at let's look at let's actually you know let's look at just twenty twenty three because twenty okay. there was some funny funny stuff at the end of twenty twenty two. Um, I don't like including the end of a calendar year as in weird tournaments at the end. Yeah, there's weird stuff. Okay, so the most dominant player holding in twenty twenty three so far has been Caroline Garcia at eighty three point six percent, and the most dominant player in terms of breaking is you want to guess <laughs> i don't I think mean, you're, I, I don't think you're gonna guess oh yeah you are that's ego <laughs> 48.2 percent so far this season um so that's kind of krachikova second but she's yeah, so, like eighth sh oh i stopped sharing sorry about that Maybe one more time you're all right it's coming along nicely I know. I like this. This is. We fun. haven't made any bets yet. We should do this for every. Well, sport. we're trying. Should, we're, should we're, make we're, a terrible baseball model. No, 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 no. <laughs> Share screen. Entire screen. Screen one. Okay, sorry when, about that. When you when um, you narrow that part. What's that? It make, when you and I do this too. I yeah, trying to share stuff. But it makes you sound a million years old. <laughs> what? <laughs> it's like, what? When you're just like, all right, share screen. Share screen. Like, okay, <laughs> let's uh, so let's let's grab all of this data because I want to know about where where she falls relative to average. Okay. Sure. So I'm gonna grab all of this data. It's this is the this is the this. calendar year 2023. All surfaces. Uh, all all women. All surfaces. All surfaces. That was break, and this is serve. You know, it is the one thing I can kind of ding uh, tennis abstract is you, 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 there's no way to automate this better. Uh, they have it's 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 like a what do you call it? Um, I forget what I was. It's it, in frames instead of just it, a table. Yeah, it's like dynamic. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah like if you, if you go to uh, this, God, what is it? Uh, team team rankings. Uh, anybody who wants to do something like this with basketball team rankings. Every single one of their uh, just learn, go look up how to use import HTML. It's a really easy call on like Google Sheets. You can bring in hundreds of pages of data if you want off of uh, uh, a few different websites like that. If it's uh, okay. something you're interested in, this is all for the calendar 23. We're going to go H plus B. 
hold percent plus break percent. I always also like to look at reserve points one versus return return points one because yep. sometimes break percent is you just lucky up by lucky by yeah. lucky. Yeah, because like I don't believe there's a clutch gene <laughs> in terms of breaking per, you know when you have a chance. Okay, so an elite hold plus break. Obviously, Iga. Let's sort these. One thirty. One thirty point eight. Now, the average of the top fifty women on tour is one hundred six. Hold plus break. Okay. And what's our what was our gal? Uh, a sorry. One hundred four. On one hundred four. Yeah, and that's well, against ninety eight. Ninety eight. Uh, ninety eight in twenty twenty three. One hundred four on clay. Uh, and her her mean opponent was seventy. Uh, if we look at some of these other ones, like Iga's me me median opponent, 25, like she's only playing good players. Rebecca well, and is only to playing be fair, good players. Yeah. that is always going to go up if you're if you're a good player. Because yeah, of course, you're if you're playing later into tournaments. tournaments. Yeah. yeah, and also these numbers are more stable because you're playing more. The sample size is bigger. It's just it's, it's it fewer all compounds. qualifying yeah. matches. Yeah, right, so fewer right. ITF matches. Oh yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, so yeah, I mean, you know, a lot of the a lot of these women are playing much better opponents, and a lot of them have higher hold break. Um, but uh, let's just sort it by uh, data. Sort by hold break percentage, largest to smallest, and one oh, will she 98 ish? Yep, 98.2. That's only kind of putting her in the Daniel Collins, right? <laughs> Actually, Bernarda Para, man, her numbers are very close to Bernarda. Actually, she's better than Bernarda Para, but her, in terms of median opponent, she's in the Martich Collins uh, Para class. If you need a kind of a frame of reference of, of, of where she is. So I think realistically, you know, that that's kind of the quality you're dealing with. And she's been on tour a little longer. So her number is probably a little more stable. We could evaluate basically the uncertainty of this stuff, but I, I you know, I'm not, uh, I, I'm not, I'm not, I, let's not get there yeah, today. Not get there. Yeah. All right. Let's, um, let's go get in Andreeva's and see what her data looks like. Cause I have a feeling hers is going to be a lot, lot, lot less uh, stable. Right. Yeah. She's newer. She's young. Like I mentioned, she's what we figure out 16. She just has her her samples going to be weirder. Yeah. Gonna be, I mean, look at some of these names. Anybody who remotely what? follows tennis, <laughs> I mean, you know Roland Garros, you know Madrid, but some of these like the W sixty. Bellinzona. I'm Bellinzona? assuming it's an Italian. Like every clay Piazzo. challenger is in Italia. Monte Mon Monastir. Monastir. Well, Monastir is in. I'm pretty sure I that's Tunisia. That is. is it? Okay. I'm almost certain. So that's these are that's these are now much, 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 much lower tournaments. And uh, if we look at her 2023 so far, who is she playing? Who, buddy? Other than recently, the ranks of these opponents is very, 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 very low. Let's, so actually, actually, put, let's actually like grab that for 23 and and figure out the actual real mean. You want to know what it is? Okay, let's. Yeah, pull I'm, it. I'm actually curious. It's gonna be like it's gonna be really, really low. Yeah. New sheet. Just get a, a scrap Paste piece of paper data. here and then just highlight it. I don't think I have median queued, do I? You can click on average. It. Median. We're looking at a median opponent's rank of 205. That's not that's to say not she doesn't play anyone, but that's not that not that great either. So I thought it was gonna be worse. 205. Okay. But let's go get our numbers uh and see what they are at least, because uh, yeah, her let's... main level data is the qualifiers she just played and some yeah. Madrid, I think. I got it. How did I get to uh, the full page for Osorio? Here. Uh, through here. Year last, where, where, where were we looking at? Year, oh, shit. Yeah. Her tour level season. Tour level season. Half, yeah, she's only got four matches. We can't use that. <laughs> it's not enough. Um, 2023, she's got 13 here, four here. Um, boy. Uh, let's so you see. you want to try to use ITF and weight it differently? I Yeah, let's do this. Let's do that. Um, 2023. This is, I mean, and, and again, I'll try to make analogs to other other sports while we're doing this, but it's similar to trying to project you know, hitting stats for a guy that it's like, well, he's he was up for a cup of coffee last September and has like 30 at bats. He's raking at triple A Durham, but uh, we, yeah. we're, we're trying to project those numbers. And that's kind of what we're dealing with here. She's very good at the ITF level. 
Yeah. The other thing we could do is just pull our clay numbers because that's combined on that surface. Uh, okay. I like how we got Mira Tour and then Mira ITF. So this is going to be. In, I'm, I'm well, curious yeah. to what what uh, coefficients you want to yeah. use for this. Well, we got to we got to we got to do we got to weight it by. I would take two tour over at times one at ITF, but there's only four. The sample size of tour is only four matches, um, so we got to downweight it. Uh, we're talking about four matches wow. versus thirteen, so. I think realistically we need to go two times ITF plus that over three. We're giving them a two third, one third rating. Sixteen forty two. All right. So her twenty twenty three is better than Camilla's, but her clay is worse, interestingly. Uh, and, and obviously clay, yeah. and this this median opponent does include ITF as we scrolled and used any match she played at any level. So that 205 does include the lower level tennis she played as well. And obviously it's that median opponent is a chunk lower. Yeah, it's it is it's a lot, lot, lot easier. Okay. I think the easy <laughs> the easiest conclusion you can make looking at all this data is that it's probably a 50-50 match. <laughs> I mean, really and truly, I don't see enough of a of a signal here one way or the other, other than in Andriva's lesser known quantity. She's on the come up. She, you know, she's she's getting she's she's getting better. So yeah, the, the, for a little and while. I think and I think that's what you're yeah. seeing reflected in the market. There's a market sentiment that uh, the long tail is and Driva is a lot better than what we've yeah. seen. And she's on the come up and this is, you know, you're, you're, you're betting on a yeah. betting on a player before she's priced like she should be. All right. I'm not saying this is what we ought to do, but let's take a different crack at this. You ready? Sure. Um, I'm going to take her career. Where's her career? <laughs> Very uh, small. Career, I guess, yeah, her career. Oh, career, you go career. IT, you're gonna have to do ITF versus. Uh, no, there was a there was a different set of numbers before. Uh, I lost them. Here's a good question, Christopher Davis asks. Say one of them is up an early break. Do you have any quali quantitative way to decide how the probability should adjust? Oh yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah. there's there's data on that as far as like just how. Uh, you know, how often is that player going to be able to break back in the amount of games they have left based on the hold break percentages for both players and probably weighted against, you know, how the ELO and maybe yeah. even downweighted based on who they've played and whatnot. Let's do this. Let's take Mira's clay ITF serve points one, return points one, and grab those two. Okay. So this is Mira at the ITF level. Serve points one. Return points one. Okay. Now let's go Camilla at the ITF level. I guess I dis I disappeared her. Oh, I should have left that her was tab easy. open. That was, Next that time. was actually that was actually very easy. <laughs> uh career ITF level. Oh, her career ITF is in some oh yeah, here it is. Uh career ITF level. She is very similar. Jesus Christ. Wow. Um, a little, little better on the on surf points. Yeah. So we, we could stop here if we try to use, utilize this in a, co a computational framework. It's going to tell her that. Well, uh, and also, and Camilla's just better. Just well, I'm just looking at this too, because I'm seeing surf points are a decent amount higher for Camilla. Yeah. Uh, I'd be curious to know how much. Oh, actually, know much, I'm sorry. How much more hardcore did she play? Yeah, yeah, she played a, a bunch more, I bet. Um, so yeah, when when you see something like that, it's it's worth looking as like, what what are the samples that we just pulled? Did somebody play a shitload more hardcore than the other? Did someone play? You know, or were, was it a similar amount? Are we looking? I'm gonna at a fair take. Adjustment? I'm gonna take her career tour level clay, heart uh, serve and, and return, uh, okay. which are which are good. Uh, and better than uh, Mira's, but um, I, I want I want these numbers because this is actually how I I prefer to use this as a baseline pricing for a match because win probability of the match is fine, but I really want uh, a distribution of totals. I want a distribution of set outcomes. I want the full shebang, I want the and whole you can't shebang. do that with an elo. 
rating, which is why I really want to go down this road independently. Um, no, because unless- there's a bunch of other markets in Tennessee. You want to bet set handicaps, game handicaps, totals, first game totals and stuff, or first ma- first set totals. Like you're yeah. gonna need a little more information than just that money line we figured out. Yeah. So let's take uh, let's assume these are the correct percentages uh, for set points one, return points one for Mira and Camilla. Actually, yeah. we, I want to be a little closer, Mark. We got to find better numbers for for Mira. Otherwise, we're just gonna be so far away. Yeah, I was gonna say just looking at that for the example, Mira Mira is minus one fifty, and we're showing a clear bias to. <laughs> you shouldn't. Let's take a time out and say you shouldn't probably do. Yes. We're no, doing no, this for no. illustrative we're, purposes. We're just, yes, right. But okay, we, there we, we go. just realized yeah. like we're okay. gonna show basically without even doing the math, we're so gonna I want took, to bet on Camilla. I took Mira's tour clay numbers and I took Camilla's tour clay numbers. And uh, let's pl- plug them into uh, an actual and actually simulate this match. Uh, Zoom in a little on that. That's impossible well, to see. We'll we'll uh. Or is that or is that uh? Proprietary? No, I don't care. I'll share. I share. I share this. This is this is no big deal at all. Um, I actually wrote this for this particular podcast. So I don't use this one myself, but uh, that's fine. Uh, okay. So let's do uh. Before we do that, let's just say that you have a pretty stable, um. Actually, let's go back. To, let me let me uh, let me take a Tell giant step back here. I mean, I think a lot What's of people. Are, I think the first question is like, what do you even have open there? Uh, this is MATLAB, which is basically MATLAB. it's basically the same as uh, our Python in terms of computational uh, power, but I use it because it's better for signal processing, which is what I do in my day job. <laughs> mm-hmm. So uh, that's why I tend to uh, uh, use MATLAB more frequently. Um, but yeah, if we set up. You know, we, we kind of go through the example that we had before here of, uh, you know, setting up uh, an ELO type of model uh, where we have player A and the ELO we want to use, player B and the ELO we want to use. We set the win probability as that equation, uh, and then we convert everything to uh, money lines exactly like we did in Excel, but now all formalized in a way that we just click and bang, uh, I don't think I can zoom in on this side. Sorry, but it says Ega's win probability is sixty-seven point eight percent or minus two eleven. Sabes thirty-two point two or plus two eleven. Fair, okay. So that's just the same exact example we went through earlier with Excel, where we just crunch and bang get a win percentage. Right? You remember those numbers? Yes. Okay. Now, if we flip to actually trying to sim this thing out, uh, let's use our player a hold percentage that we want to use for a given point i'm doing i want to i want to sim this mat i want to sim a match between these two women by at the point level you ready for that you yes. think we can do this all right well i, I want you. i want to hold Matt percentage. All day. i want to hold and yeah christopher davis three, points yeah. out is matlab is super not free um there are like six or seven free options of like a Scilab, I think, is one, and he mentions Octave. I think that's one of the biggest. I have two. like a home license that was a hundred dollars. So, oh, really? <laughs> yeah, I, I, isn't I, maybe it's the enterprise I, one? Is I expensive. use it commercially. Don't tell them. Oh, sure. Um, the uh, the yeah, of course, I'm an uh, adjunct <laughs> professor. <laughs> I'm an adjunct professor. Actually, I am. I, I can I can show them evidence of that. Um, anyway, the Inputs that I'm going to use here are the whole percentage for player A, the break percentage for player A, which is Iga. Okay, she's she holds on on uh, on clay. Uh, this is my normalized value for her. I do. I have a weighted value here. We didn't get into this, but just pretend like we did. Weighting between the last three seasons with time decay. Weighting between uh, all and clay with uh, with a 50-50 weight. Okay, mm-hmm. she's holding. 67% of points or 68% of her points. She is breaking on 47.3% of her points. Sabalenka is holding on just under just over 60% of her points and breaking on uh, uh, 45% of her points. So these are the uh, point by point probabilities of Sabal- Iga and Sabalenka holding and breaking. Okay. We are going to flip a coin. <laughs> We are going to set a number of while loops here and just set a flag so that when the while, when the match over flag hits one, then 
we end, we, you know, we kick out and we report the score. Okay. Uh, and you know, before we get too deep in this, I mean, let's just go with, uh, let's just do one simulation. Okay. We're just going to do a single, uh, match between Iga and Sabalenka, right? Um, so basically we're going to, uh, simulate a match inside a match. We're going to simulate a game inside a game. We're going to simulate a point. Okay. Using the hold and break percentages. Using the hold and break percentages. And the, what I'm doing here is effectively, I'm, all of this is just kind of keeping track of who's serving, depending on who wins the coin toss, blah, blah, blah. And then I'm taking, a, a, I'm coming up with a random. I was going to say, talk about how it uses, you know, I'm coming up with a, I'm coming up with a, with a random, uh, a random number. Okay. Let's, uh, let's just pretend. Let's see what it does. So okay. when, when people, when people joke about other people's uh, models yeah. on Twitter and they say, you know, you must, you're just using a random number generator to come up with stuff. Yeah, that's right. Actually, I mean, a lot of good models do use, or at least, I, at least simulations. Like you have I to. Don't they, they, I, you just need a seed to simulate uh, some uh, some value here, and this is a uniformly distributed decimal out to four, you know, free free uh, out to four uh, decimal points, uh, and you can see it's going between zero and one. Okay, and I, this is something too. You know, talking about the, the difficulty, I think a lot of people are probably looking at this and thinking this is a lot. This is you can take this down a little. You can. You can do this. You could probably do this in Excel. I've done some light simulations, and you know, obviously, there's just a rand function in there too, mostly for score stuff. In the game, inside of a you know point, uh, the point inside of a game, inside of a set, inside of a match is tricky. You might need oh, a little yeah. help for that. Christopher's right. Octave is the free analog. Yeah, he's right. That's right. Yeah. Sorry. Um, okay. So basically, I'm coming up with a random number. If the random number between zero and one is greater than 67% and Iga's scoring, then it goes to Sabalenka. If it's less than 67.5%, then in the then the point goes to Iga. Does that make it's sense? Like dungeon, yeah, it's like Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah, you, yeah above or roll, below. Roll the, your 20-sided yeah, die. Roll, roll the dice. Are we above or below the number? If you're above, point to, point to Sabalenka. If you're below, point to Iga. Perfect we, we, we play this out until one player has at least four points with a margin of two yep. because that is the stupid tennis scoring of 15 30 40 40 40 you got to go to two more points six four you got to go to two more points eight six right and then we play a we play a uh so we play a game until one player has a four points margin of two we play a set until one player has six games margin of two yep. or if it's tied six six then i do a whole tie break loop right i love that you had this is the worst <laughs> part about tennis so you, have to, you have to build six, a tie break loop build a tie break loop uh i thought about just putting a coin toss in there for this example but once first i got rolling seven I just by did two first uh first to first it, no basically i have a kick out if it gets to six six then we end the then the set is over and you play an independent tie break which is like its own set and then you give one extra game to whoever wins the tie break. Sure, sure. Um, but you do it, but but by the rules. Um, and then yeah, this, the match is over when a player wins two sets. And then uh, yeah, let's display player A wins, player B wins. Player A was uh, eager, right? Player B was saves. And uh, yeah, let's. Uh, I think I could um, probably do this on a TI okay. eighty four. Okay, we just did one. We just did one simulation with those inputs. Sabalenka won. What's the score? I can't see. It's it's hard to six. How do I zoom in on this one? Do you know? I don't think you can. You'll just have to read me the score. Pretend I'm a podcast listener. Let me see. You take a screenshot and then you zoom in. Oh, you do? No, no, I don't. I'm I'm, I'm working. Sabalenka won uh, two six six four six three. Uh, and because I only did one simulation, it just in, it just spits out when probably for Sabalenka was 100 and Ego was zero. Um, okay, so that was one simulation. You ready? Let's do yeah, 10. Let's do more. Let's do 10. Ready? 10 simulations. Sab won the first one. Sab won the second one. The third Straight one. The fourth sets. one. Then Ega. Then Ega. Then Ega. Ega. 
she's on a roll. She's dominating. She's dominating. Uh, all right. So that was bizarre. We basically flipped a. We okay. So first of all, we just I keep track of this because I was uh, flipping. Curious. Flipping. We flipping well, it's not. It's not flipping tails a bunch because no, no. We just tails, generated. Tails is, we just generated uh fourteen hundred and six numbers to get these 10 results so basically mm -hmm. 1406 points were played between these two women and uh weirdly sabalenka won the first four and then eagle won the second six that's ridiculous i can't kind of believe that that happened that's very weird uh ego win probability is six out of ten saves one four out of ten based on these 10 rationalizations so minus 150 plus 150 fair so far so good there you go should we do more than 10? Let's keep going. Let's make a hundred. And let's uh let's speed up our uh let's speed up our our uh, sim a little bit here. Oh bang 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 This is like that movie. Yeah. Speed. In the let's see here. In the one hundred simulation, Sabes one. Out of the one hundred simulations, Eagle won seventy one percent of the time. Saves one twenty nine percent of the time. Do you have an output that gives you uh, median total games? Oh, we're oh, you better okay, 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 okay. Well, <laughs> oh, you it. better believe it. We'll come back to that in in a minute because I want to use the same framework to try to answer the mirror question later. Um, but uh, let's uh, let's see how long it takes for this to become stable because this is this is bananas to me. Like I really kind of can't believe this. Let me get rid of the. Well, what what did we come up with our score. original money line? Two eleven. Get rid of we the We're about score. sixty-seven percent. Oh, I can. Oh, I can definitely go back to that. Get rid of the. Pause. No, I mean just the 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 first yeah. thing we did. Just our our yellow our yellow. Jesus, I did it. Our we elo to, was pull that part out. Uh, sixty-seven point eight for Iga, thirty-two point yep. two for Sabalenka. That was our elo. I mean, even at a hundred, we weren't far off. No, we weren't. But uh, let's uh, let's go to where what am I at now? I'm at I'm at a hundred. Let's go to a thousand and see what we get. A thousand I get sixty-six point eight for Iga, thirty-three point two for Sabalenka. Interesting. So we're diverging a little bit towards Sabalenka from the Elo model. Let's do a thousand again and see if it comes with the same uh same answer oh now this time ego 63 8 so we are not even close to stable 64 65 64 65 okay so we got to do more Take than a 10k 10k we're going up 10k 66 66 66 65 65 okay so we're getting closer i'm going to do 100k i've already tested this out we need to do 100k to get this right and my affair is now 65.6 or minus 191 uh, for Ega to win versus 34.4 plus 191 for Sabalenka. So that this these inputs of hold and break for these two women weighted the way I chose to is spitting me out that if they play a match on clay in neutral conditions clay, then your fare should be around 191. Fair? Yeah. And that is again compared to the Elo, which gave us two eleven. So not a huge divergence, but you know, twenty cents is nothing to sneeze at. <laughs> you know, that's uh, that's not that's nothing to sneeze at. Um, let's go back to uh, some of the other interesting parts here. Uh, so yeah, but back to uh, simming hundred thousand times. I would just always do a million. You want to do a million? No, a million takes I, a little longer. I, yeah, I don't don't do something silly that like, okay. freezes. But a million out. takes like ten seconds. Um, oh, I know I don't we don't have time, time for this. <laughs> okay, let's look at histogram of total. Total. Okay. Can you see that? You make it bigger. Oh, look at that! How's it's that? gorgeous. The labels are a little small, but I trust them. So this is a histogram of totals, and what you have here is. 20 is here. You'll never guess what this gap is here, Andy. What's this gap? What's this gap? Do you know 22? what it is? 21. It's 20, well, 21. Yeah. 21. 10, 10 plus 11. 21 is the, is the, uh, uh, the white whale of, uh, of tennis sets getting, landing. Give it, getting a, a 10 game set. Very, very common. Yes. Follow, following it up with an 11 game set. Not possible. Not possible. <laughs> also, you Not see, possible. you see a little, you see a little, yeah. uh, 
it's it's easy to tell too what uh, what our low end is there 12 yeah yeah and 39 yeah we had uh let me see what our uh first well like I, I, I can pull it up a second so yeah this is what a, a distribution of totals looks like not normal <laughs> kind of cool that it's not a normal distribution um well and again 24 yeah. a little low because of the tie break plus an 11 doesn't happen correct and uh and also eight 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 is tough to come by if you have three sets basically if yeah. you go to three sets you push into this part of the distribution uh and you can't have two sets more than 23 so that's kind of a hard that's that, that's a hard transition there where 24 is the low the, the least common number of games in a tennis match for best of three sets um let's look at this data number one another way you good with that i never thought about 888 but yeah 888 is good. 888 is tough so is 879 so is you know 10 6 8 all of those are it's just you you need some yeah you need some real random shit to happen to get that to uh to hit 24 um hmm, 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 hmm. let's plot 12 12 is let's plot a cumulative distribution of our total okay you know what a cumulative distribution is of the of the total here this is the cumulative distribution of our simulated total Okay. What this well, I'm just, curious. What so is what, the y-axis here? So the y-axis is percentile. Okay. okay. So zero. So basically, ten percent. Only ten percent of the matches fall below yeah. seventeen. Sure. No, I get o this now. I can go to ninetieth percentile here, and only ten percent of the matches go over thirty-three. Okay. So while we didn't have a standard distribution of results. It's not that nice, crazy. It's not it's, that crazy. We have a nice little. Yeah. This this is pretty linear. It's pretty linear. It is. There's only that one little hiccup and in the again, middle. And again, if you're right listening to this podcast forum, yeah, maybe maybe go get YouTube. <laughs> yeah. So uh, let's look at what the 50th percentile is here. Smooth this. I hate how it's jagged. Oh no, this is discrete. I know, but I still don't like the way it looks like steps. Okay, so 20. The 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 total here is 20. The um the uh, um. The median of this distribution care. is what you care about. Who gives a yeah. shit about what the mean is? It does not matter. The median is what matters here. 50% of the time, games are finishing with 23 or fewer. 50% of the time, the games are finishing with 24 or more. Andy. In fact, there's a, a little bit more over, which means what? We should, what should we open for our total? We should be... Well, I mean, just... and a half, right? <laughs> well, just, just knowing where this match probably would have opened... Yeah. Based on the money line, I'm guessing this was like 22 and a half. Probably, yeah. But in the but the correct number would have been 23 and a half juice to the over. Yeah. By this sim it says 23 That's and a half curious. juice to the over is the right total. Do you still have uh tennis uh, or do you still have uh the odds? Well, I'm curious what the total was. And again, some of this takes into account the fact that they already played and we should uh, take it with a little grain of salt, but I'm guessing this is 22, 22 and a half. It was 21. Wow. It's 21. Even, even I I think I was anchored in on how high your fucking number was on the simulation. Well, I, I think this was, no. I mean, this the, the matches that led up to this, Ego was blasting, blasting chicks. Like she was just not, no, taking no prisoners. Um, We're clipping that. <laughs> she was taking a no prisoners it was not a fair fight most of the time so i think the you know the the kind of in the mind of the better it was a, a lopsided distribution where Iga was dominant and she wins in straights uh in fact i bet you Iga in straights was uh a pretty uh was kind of a a, a wild one um Iga two zero was minus 139 even huh. though you know, yeah, that this was this this entire match was kind of tilted because it was like my Iga got bet to oblivion. Iga got bet out to minus three thirty, yeah. right? That that that's that. And was, again, it's it is easier to model things and say yeah. showed you showed you what happened there after it happened. Yeah, but I'm very I'm very good at modeling things after this, the fact. This, as well, this should tell it you did go yeah. over. Yeah, the e, so far, Andy, in this exercise, the elo that we did, the hold break sim that we did. Is all telling you that fair is somewhere in the ballpark of two minus two, minus two to one. Or one to two, yeah. This is this is the classic, classic example of uh, Iga is um, it has a premium, right? And if you want evidence as to this being the case, you want you, you ready for this result? 
Check this one out. You spell Stuttgart, you know? <laughs> yeah, Stut- well, S-T-U-T-T. T-U-T-T, yeah. Uh, fuck. On. Internet's slow. Oh, WTA Stuttgart. I forgot there's a, there's a grass men's tournament in Stuttgart. Yeah. I don't know if you knew that. That's coming up soon, actually. The Stuttgart final. What do you know, Andy? There was a little bit of recency bias baked into that Madrid number. The Stuttgart market was Iga minus 208. My God, right on the nails of our ELO number. Uh, and uh, what do you think this total is? Well, the total's a little lower. Maybe 22, 22 and a half. Yeah, spot on, 22. Um, all right, man. Well, I think we figured it out. There was an ego. There was an ego. Um, ego tax. There was an ego tax uh, in uh, in Madrid, and I think, especially considering the conditions, I'm mad that I didn't. Uh, yeah, yeah. I never have the balls to go against ego on clay, so it's usually like, you know, ego or or pass. And I'm pretty sure I saw that number and passed. Um, regretfully. All that said. Being able to send it out gives you this distribution of totals. You can also, of course, look at sets, look at correct score for sets. All of this is stuff that you can directly back out if you have uh, a do simulated. A, can you do a histogram of total sets? Uh, sure. I mean, it's just um, going to be too far. Am I so. keeping track of sets? Let me see. I, I wasn't so sure. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Um, Asking for something you didn't actually make. Total equals... Uh, yeah. T sets. I some of sets. And you go to sets one. Um, Combination of oh yeah, yeah combination of that's one by both players. That's a plus. That's b. Yep. Okay. Uh, you want to do uh, let's see. Ah, correct score is a little tougher to. Well, yeah, let's to let's not get to correct score. That's gonna be a yeah. mess. Okay, so my. His... I want to guess. I want to guess what we have here too. Is it? Is it <clears throat> one sets or two sets compared to three sets in this match. Probably. Wow. That Close. was not, that was not anyway. Yeah. I was, 50, I was, I was 53% like, versus uh, 47%. I was going to go 65, 35. Yeah. Well, though, in uh, you know what, Andy, almost consistently when I do this for clay, it tells, it tells you, you to bet, to bet the three set sets. Price. Yes. <laughs> yes. That's right. How'd you know that? <laughs> Again, another well, example well, that, of qualitatively of, getting you to the answer instead of building an entire freaking well, framework. Yeah, because, well, honestly, yeah. because that uh, Jesus, that that seems wrong. I'm curious to that. Like, well, the 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 break the break percentages are really high on clay compared to uh, all. If you look at all tennis, it's not. It's you know, there's even these numbers which I have literally shaded towards all because the sample is bigger when it comes to well who is really break you know what is the neutral break hold it's you know it's it, it's clay it's a slower but, surface but but we shouldn't be going to three sets 50 percent of the time like that just the the betting the bet what's the betting price on that usually i mean it's always like plus 130 140 uh, let's see handicap or total plus 144 in this case yeah, one, i was going to say you, it's going to be showing massive value on that constantly yeah I, and, I, and that that's just a this is just a fun question i want to ask you yeah what do you think this well thought out numerical model is missing that is saying that your matches in a hundred thousand simulations are going to three sets that often and i'm wondering if it's Players play differently when they're down a break. Yeah, and we don't no, have, we don't have that question. level of granularity. Yeah, no, it, it uh, it's my assumption that every point is neutral, yeah. which is not true. Right, tactically, certain things happen in matches that 
change the fabric of the match. Would you agree with that? Yeah, I mean, there are there are that's, big, that's, once, that's exactly once a player what it is. once a yeah. player goes. It would be, I mean, it, I guess it wouldn't be that difficult to write. Yeah. Just to have to put a loop in. It's like once a player is down a set, here's what changes, and um, this amount of and this Correct. amount of players quit. <laughs> Correct. Because like, in reality, it's not a coin flip. It's not a random generator. There is a reason that a player with the, a certain po- uh, there's a reason that a player with a certain break or hold percentage want a given point. It's not all math. And if it is as simple as player A figured out a way to fundamentally improve their neutral break percentage against player B because they are reading their serve. They did you ever hear that story about uh, Agassi and uh and this, the the um, I can't even remember who it was now, but uh, Rebel Cannon Six. Yeah, not the Rebel Cannon Six. <laughs> Agassi, who was basically uh, kind of figured out. Uh, maybe it was. It was Boris Becker. Boris Becker's tell. Yes. Yes. He figured out Boris he had like Becker's a poker tell. tell. He had a poker yeah. tell about when he was going to go wide versus down the tee and to serve, and he predicted it well enough that his hold percentage number was always going to be wrong no matter what data set you were looking at unless you were specifically looking at a small sample of his break percents against becker and there's a lot of like singular player v player stuff like that that's that you have to add on to as a qualitative layer i think um but but i will also tell you that i bet a lot of over two and a half sets uh especially on the women's side when we are in I, I don't mind I, and I know noops uh and people should know who noops is um tennis tennis better basketball better weather betting originator in the past he does quite a bit of that as well where I mean the the variance in some of these women's matches is high the level of quit once uh, you're up a set and you lose that first break in the second set yeah the sure pun- the amount of punting you see on that sort of thing sure just leans towards it i i believe i'm saying this without super empirical evidence but some of times those prices are like plus 150 or, or much bigger if you have a lopsided money line match and you know all it takes is a goofy break and somebody punting on a couple of returns and boom you cash a pretty big price and i mean you're right i think it is better on the women's side all right what are we doing Mir- yep. Mira and camilla you know what else, though? I, I will also say this, that from what I understand about the way they price a lot of these markets for totals and for sets and stuff like that, it is historically based, money lined, close this. What does that discrete distribution look like? Yep. Right? Like the histi- like this, this plot here. Um, you want to hear one? I get what you're saying. And one weird thing fun thing from like tailing noops enough on some of that stuff i don't know if it if it's actually a thing because you can't bet a very large amount on it it's a derivative it's a smaller derivative i don't what does bookmaker take on that like maybe five hundred thousand. i have no idea uh I, I feel like you know tennis you can get a lot down if you want on bigger matches but a derivative like total sets is a little Five, lower yeah it is a lot lower. 500 yeah, probably right. 500 so but i've noticed this and a lot of times i'm i've just kicked bet online out because they just don't have that prop it's not easy to find sometimes the way they have it formatted so a lot of times i'm looking between like bovada and bookmaker and this is a an experiment i never did but there were so many times where it would be uh like let's say it's around plus 150 for this three sets yes and bovada has plus 150 and bookmaker has plus 151 like they're they want <laughs> like they want you to bet it because you're getting that extra penny yeah but then on the same set and the same thing later that week they'll have a plus 149 yeah you know they're they're always like uh, just a little bit off i don't know if I don't know. It all just bothered me enough that sometimes I ended up staying away from some of those when uh, there was shade one way or the other. I um, mean, that's just my tennis superstition in me. Uh, they'll actually take to win a K on uh, total sets. To right win? In, so it's uh, a weird in, amount. In, 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 250, in 250 matches, yeah. So uh, maybe I need to be pressing that edge a little harder. I don't know. Well, there you go. Uh, let's uh, Let's... Let me just check something out real quick. Well, it sounds like you'd be betting in every play match for the rest of your life. Uh, well, 
there's got to be a, I mean, there, there's got to be a, 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 a kind of a sweet spot, I would guess, that you can tease out of the, this is maybe, uh, this is maybe better saved for another pod, but there's a, I would guess that there's a sweet spot of a certain price point um, in terms of a money line where the historical data says there's an edge and, and your, um, your model would say it's an edge. Do you know what I'm trying to say? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Like, like minus 300 favorites where you're getting plus 175 is where you want to be betting that or something like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. They're, they're, like you said, they're, they're using the, they're probably using uh, the money lines as uh, just looking at that, looking yeah. at that distribution of, of, you know, money lines in that range and setting it accordingly. And there's probably some, some edges to be had based on the matchups. Yeah. Uh, let me show you one other thing where we could test some theories out um, before we go final, kind of close the book here on Mira. Um, Tennis-data.co.uk has been a very valuable site for me in all of my years doing this because they summarize Bet365 and Pinnacle odds for every match on every surface at the tour yeah. level. Who's the one that updates this one? I have no idea. I, I honestly have no clue. I just I know. I feel that like this there's somebody is, behind this one as well. I, is I thought it was a, a writer. There's Stevie G. You know that. Allie you know G Stevie, in the house. Steven Stevie G's tennis. Stevie G yeah. tennis. Steve. Uh, there's this site which is different. Uh, Steve Damn, G different. tennis. Uh, and actually, this is this. He he has done the trouble. You don't even have. You don't even have to do uh, um, a uh, uh, an e a, a complicated Elo Excel sheet. He's got it all right here for you. Um, no, this is here. Joseph Buchdahl. I'm sure of it. Oh yeah, does he? Like the, no, the 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 dot co dot uk. I'm almost sure he does that. Like he does some stuff with soccer. You know, oh. he's he's written a couple books. Well, you want it? Yeah, you want it? You want Either way, know. good resources. You're right. Yeah, you want to know what the um, uh, you want to know what the the straight up Elo crunch out will be. Steve G Tennis has a bunch of this sort of stuff. Where's Where's Andreev? Uh, Andreeva. Look for the they they don't put the Russian flag up anymore. Oh, here it is. Yeah, there it's right there. It was the top one. I'm fucking blind. <laughs> uh, he's got Osorio thirty two. 0.47 uh, and driva 67 that seems like his regress to market <laughs> that's i don't know how you come up with that uh, i mean again it's still minus 145 at chris taking to win i mean thousand dollar limit on chris i guess right is now. it is it yeah, minus 145 for her so you minus 145 plus 122 on the comeback currently this match is one of the first ones off in the morning our time if you're European and a little later in the day. Yeah, you're so right. he's he's considerably off. He's up over minus two hundred. Yeah, he's way way up there. Um, and I honestly, looking at whatever statistics he's plugging into this thing, I have no idea how he's getting this. Um, I guess he just likes her. He's got he's he's only using tour. You know what it is? He's only using tour level stuff. That's. No, I, I have no idea what's going on here. I have no <laughs> clue how you can plug these numbers and get that those percentages. This is this feels very black boxy to me. Anyway, the tennisdata.co.uk. Let's pull all of the clay from 2022 and just take a look at a certain odds range and then plot what those totals actually looked like compared to what we projected, and you'll see the difference, right? Sure. We will test your uh, test your theory. Open her up. The we have a uh, lot. Let's see. How many lines is that? Uh, oops, uh, 2,600 matches from last year. It uh, so, oh, I, I grabbed ATP, that's not going to be as useful. We got to go back to yeah, WTA. she didn't play a ton of ATP. No. Oh, that's 2023. Shit. 2022. Let's go here. You've now go. downloaded so many files. I know, and they probably all have viruses. Ow! It's, I don't know. How hard is it to put a virus in Excel? Okay, let's go with data sort by 
surface, which is what the shit. Take it easy. Sort man. by surface. <sighs> Get rid of all the grasses. Okay. Looking at uh, 638 matches. It's only clay? It's only clay. This is all rounds. This is all levels, including slam, I'm assuming. Yep, French Open's in there. Um, and let's take what do you want our what do you want our um, our price bin? to be let's look at even to minus 140 or plus uh, what, 100 what, plus plus one plus 100 to what's the what's minus 140 in decimal 1.714 okay i think actually Let's go 100, my 100 divided by 140. 714 is correct. I know all the all the multiples of 5 to like minus 150. 1.952, 1.909. Sorry, man. One more time. What range do you want? Uh, 2 yep. to 1.714. Oh, you just sorted and you gotta manually highlight it. I'm gonna include the seven ones. I guess. I guess we're going to 145. Okay. So that is 130 matches. Uh, and we are going to do games equals sum of all of these. Oh, there's a bunch of retirements in there. Shit. You get the retirements out. You of got there. retirements in there. I was going to say those eights okay. are really going to throw things off. <laughs> retirements, obviously, guys, if you didn't already know, get. Uh, Probably got to toss those in the bin for the purposes yeah, they of all, almost they get, anything. Uh, they get uh, refunded, is what I was trying to say. Okay. So we're down to a sample of 118 matches from last season with those odds range and um you get some said. of games do you get some of sets done too yeah i'll do the same thing yep boom it's so tiny, I can't see anything either. So I'm just trying. Well, yeah, I know. I'm gonna, I'm gonna plot these two together. Plot, insert. Sorry about that. Current selection. Insert. Plot. Jack that up, make it huge. Yeah. Hang on a I love how you can hear B, that bird going nuts. B, C, C. Oh, I wanted all of them. Fuck. <laughs> I can't even use Excel anymore. I'm so stuck on my It's really, really rough. It's nice. I don't even have it on this uh, the computer I'm using right now. I have, there's something that there's like this Excel fill in when you actually try to open an Excel file. It's like Libra office. It's pretty horrible. <laughs> 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 it's right, bad. It's, yeah, it's like generic Excel. It's rough. It's not there you go. One, two, so good. that is, uh, there is, a, there is a pretty obvious bust and shift in distribution there. All right. So what's, uh, which one's odd? Oh, actually, wait a second. I fucked up. Hang on a second. What? How in the world? Uh, 
didn't uh, do this right. Sorry, man. It's all right. But well, well, you're going to try to display the probability based off betting odds and then the, the probability of it happening. Correct. Okay. And is there a way to do that on that on that chart where we can show the biggest divergences? Yeah. This one's fun. Okay. Right, so there smaller you go. divergences, but still exists in the middle there. Yeah. So uh, the blue, just said, the yeah. blue is my simulated distribution of outcomes for a number yeah. of games in a set in a best of three match with the on, on women women's clay, and orange is the actually observed, uh, and obviously there. Uh, uh, I'm my model is telling me to bet the over when I should be respecting the market. I guess right. Yeah. It's close, which honestly good. I mean, the market is the market's still the market, and you should be trusted to a certain point. But uh, yeah, there is a section there in the middle. I'm going to go back. You want to see the histogram of this? Yeah. Actual. There you go. Let's make that a favorite. All right. What are we looking at here? This is total games? Total games in that sample. So there's 130, 130 matches. This is what the actual sample looks like. Lows at 21 and 24, like we expected. Not as many three set matches. Yep. Like you expected. Yeah. <laughs> Fascinating. All right. Let's, uh, Let's close it up with Mira and Camilla, bringing them back from the beginning where we just priced it out ELO. I'm okay. going to keep saying it now. <laughs> it's like, uh, God, when, when Kelly and I used to do tennis talk, I had a, a nervous tick where I couldn't say uh, John Isner's name. Uh huh. I defaulted towards the old CEO of uh, Disney. Eisner. Eisner. Michael Eisner. I remember Eisner. All right. Let's see here. Somebody in the hall is being kind of loud. Man. At this point, and this is this is another good point about uh, data collection modeling and doing any sort of experiments with this. You will get to this point where you have way too many windows open. You're hitting control tab. You're never finding what you're looking for, and you need to like go get a drink of water. Um, don't know what I did there. All right. So with those inputs we crafted. All right. So you just went hold and break percentages. I went tour level on Mira. clay. Yep. Tour level on clay, Camilla. I forgot to type her name in. With those numbers, I come up with a pick a match. Camilla wins 50.4% of the time, minus 102 fair. Mira, 49.6 plus 102 fair. So we're still probably at the point where this is a smallish sample size tennis player in, in Mira where the market is hot on her. And we need to decide if we respect our modeling or if we respect the market enough more. And honestly, that's exactly right. Honestly, <laughs> that's exactly I'd, right. In, in something yeah. like this where... I'm using, I'm not only using small sample sizes, but workarounds and trying to weight lower level results in and doing my best. And if the market says one thing and my janky, you know, workarounds are saying another, this is probably a stay away match as far as betting for me. And again, everyone has a different risk tolerance and everyone trusts what they do a little differently. And you, can, of course, do some back testing on this if you can find a bunch of players who, where, hey, let's look at a bunch of stars when they were first coming in. Or yeah. let's look at a bunch of people who flamed out and see what they looked like coming up. I like it. Um, the other thing that I would do I, differently than what we're doing for this basic example here 
And it probably actually speaks to why we're seeing that misfit on the distribution of total games. You and I, you know, we teased it a little bit, but if you build in an imp- basically like the start and the end of the 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 metrics, the power ratings, whatever you're using for a player between the start and the end, if you simulate that so that it kind of grows or declines, uh, I think makes sense. And basically a static neutral rating and simulation this way is tough. Um, You're saying bad, bad play early begets more bad play. Correct. Yeah. If you're having a bad day, you're having a bad day, you're going to continue to have a bad day. If you're having a good day, you're going to be having a good day, right? More likely to continue at the level than suddenly pop back to their media. That's you said it better than I could. Correct. I think you put a band around the values you let it go one way or the other randomly. And you have to stay within that band once you stand you're there. within the band, stay within the band, but you end at a, you know, you can even use a curve where you start it and then you come back down, but right. But let, but let it sample and let it like Bayesian update every time a point is played so that you have basically an arc of how a player performs during the course of the match. And I've built that in before for player, for live betting stuff when back in the day, like there was no point in, pre-flop betting and then on a doll match but mm-hmm. you need you could tell you i could tell you with almost perfect certainty he was going to play better at the end of the match than he was going to play at the beginning and you could take the result the data from set one plug it in figure out the arc he was going to get to by set four and a best of five and you know have pretty f- you know clever ways to find some live market entries uh, as he improved over the balance of the match and Djokovic does a lot of that right now too I think so. So an interesting question by Christopher here is do you do something similar when simulating long season, long results? So similar, but different because you have more time to adjust. Like you're not, you're not doing it within a single simulation. Let's say, let's call it even baseball where the, the, the time frame might be, I have 16 hours until the next game. You have the static data from the last game. You can update your, you know, you can update your stuff and you can, basically your model or manually or however you're doing it can update those bands as well. I, I guess that's just, that's just I, kind of not updating your priors, but Chris, uh, downweighting your priors. Yeah. Honestly. Christopher, the answer to this question is 100% yes, especially if you're trying to do something like simulate the NFL season. Mm. Um, Andy, you want to know how many, Oh yeah, that's a good, that's Andy, yeah. I, I was you, talking more of like in season, but yes, so he meant simulating yeah. season long. Andy, if oh, you project, sure. if you project, um, season, you know, team performance metric, whatever you want to use on how they perform in a game by game state, they level. Yeah. If you project that from the beginning of the season to the end of the season, you want to know how many in reality are flat lines with oscillations around that line, which is to say, whatever parameter you're using, you shouldn't be updating it if they're going better or if they're doing worse, right? Like, not, none, none. There is no stable median you should be projecting around, in my opinion, for any type of uh, simulation for football team level because teams get better or worse. And the real reason is injuries, but also just improvement, player level improvement or regression. Mm -hmm. Uh, All of that stuff is super real. So you want to for sure build that into a simulation of the NFL season because where a team starts and where they end in terms of their median expectation is so rarely (laughs) the same number that you should be oscillating around. It's growing or it's decaying and it's, uh, and maybe it goes up and then it goes down, right? And, like and you want all those shapes reflected. In well, one way, say the Bayesian approach sounds good. And I mean, what is the Bayesian approach? It's building enough, like what, what's known. And, you know, you, if you're doing a simulation and you're using what's known as already and not updating that as it goes, it's not really, I guess, truly Bayesian. <laughs> that's right it should be it should be updating on you know any what? any information it has and as soon as you've simulated those first games that's new information thank you well said that's exactly the way i would build it um all right hopefully we've given you guys some good tools we'll, we'll, we'll wrap it up here oh hell yeah for sure um i think uh doing something similar about nfl stuff when we get closer if we're looking for content is is worthy uh, simulating games or whatever, simulating anything. Um, Some player prop stuff would be a fun one. Ooh, good call. Really good call. Um, we can, yeah. 
you yeah, should train, read uh, Mr. On Eager. Some... Mr. Eager just wrote an article about wide receivers, which is pretty interesting. If if you want to do some reading after this, uh, our friend Dr. Eric Eager over at Sumer Sports, he writes quite a bit. Uh, he had a good one today. I like those podcasts quite a bit too. Get some different guys on there. I've been listening to a little more football content. It's been it's been fun. Although some there's so much just like you know the one week it was just like my entire podcast feed was draft grades. Mm-hmm. It's like I can't read any of this. Like I'm not gonna. I can't listen to any of these. It's just gonna be the same twenty opinion. I did. I did pick and choose a couple, and there were some interesting opinions about you know team team building stuff, and I thought that was good. But like draft grades kills me. And you know what? Let's wrap what? it up with a bet. What do you want to bet? I, this is fun. Let's do it. It's our uh, secret pod play. Over two and a half sets. All right. I see you have in, bookmaker uh, open. I in Mira. In, in Mira. Uh, in Mira Andriva. I'm about to see it flash then. It's plus 148. <laughs> so at 330. Mira, what are you allowed to bet? To win 500? To win 500, yeah. Yeah, let's do it. I, this is this is fun because we have decided it should be closer to a 50-50 match based on a lot of different methodologies. We've decided the dog is alive based on some methodologies. Uh, we've I personally think Clay, you know, going the distance is still a little underpriced, even if the results don't bear that out. For sure. And and honestly, the the thing that I couldn't stop thinking about when you were talking about like exact scores. I wanted to start looking at 2-0 wins by the underdog. Oh, oh big yeah. prices up because oh, I yeah. just don't I don't believe those are priced correctly a lot of times. <laughs> I don't I did you're you're in talking to the right person. Um absolutely love it. Uh all right, man. Well, that was a good show. Let's uh let's get a three setter between the uh, up and coming Mira Andriva and uh before Camilla you even wake up Osorio. Uh, is it five o'clock East Coast time? No, it's like four Central, man. It's like two in the morning for you. Oh no! This will be All my right, first bet hey, of tomorrow. You know what we call these in the biz, Andy? Wake and wake and cash. <laughs> wake and cash. <laughs> wake and cash. Yeah. WTA yeah. bookmakers. It's it's in the tracker. Spelled bookmaker wrong. It doesn't like that. Yeah. No, Hunter bringing up a good point. I like no, this is a it. this is career defining for both of these women. Like they're not going to fuck around here. <laughs> like, well, and and again to, to tie it back, like, yeah. what I said at the beginning of the show, how this ties into yeah. last week is using all this, but then still yeah. understanding some of the the qualitative things. Yeah. I I will tell you this, uh, Hunter, Mind Hunter. I'm assuming that stands for Mind Hunter. A uh, well, great show, by the way, on Netflix. That I really thought it was Mind Hunter. Oh, it was Mind Sweeper. Mind, Remember that game? Mind Sweeper, Mind Hunter. Uh, was the uh, that was the uh, David uh, Fincher show that was just awesome on Netflix that they didn't make a third season of. Anyway, uh, that I believe that narrative qualitative layer, but I also can tell you, having seen it for sure in person, there's if this goes to like a first set tiebreak, or if the player, if one of these two players is like, I'm emptying all of the bolts in my chamber because i need to get i need to win this set like sometimes there's just a huge huge difficult time getting that second set unless that's your mindset going into it like do you know what i'm getting at andy Mm -hmm. how many times have you seen like the super live dog push it to a tie break seven six and then just like six two yeah you you lose there needs to be there needs to be a loop of like if yeah if (laughs) yeah uh if player B odds are over three yeah. and they lose his first set tiebreaker, yeah. like their hold percentage drops yeah. by 10%. Yeah. If you have an over, say an over 21 and a half, 22, and the first set goes seven, six, and the, but, but you bet at the over because you liked the dog at the price and you thought they were live. And then the dog loses the tiebreak. It's like, Disaster. They're dead. They're it's so disaster. Dead. <laughs> it's like you're, you're like, please hold twice. You're, please you're hold sure twice. Please hold twice. Total. Please hold twice. Uh yeah. <laughs> so it definitely cuts, it definitely cuts multiple ways, I would say, just depending on how intense the match is. But I'm looking, um, I'll 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 definitely catch the rewatch uh, on that one. That'll be rewatchable. All right. Let's call it a day. Thanks a lot, Hi, guys. Man. If you had fun with us modeling a little tennis, hit the thumbs up on the way out, and we'll catch you next week, huh? Yeah. Well, we didn't even. No. <laughs> I was saying.
for the bonus music. We didn't even get to modeling the outright price this Andy. I had a whole script for that. I spent all this time on that. Shit. Oh, well. I guess, I, I guess I'm just going to have to bet that myself and win a bunch of money. Sorry, guys. Part two next week. Outright's are tough.